to just be seeking God with all we got because uh, there's no better time. Today is the day of our salvation. Today is the day to press in. Today is the day to draw close to God. Today is the day to let go of some stuff that's holding us back and entangling us. And let's just just fall in love with God all, all anew again. Amen. Father, we just thank you that you are a God of miracles thank you Lord that in your presence there is the fullness of joy and your joy is our strength to live out these days so father we just thank you that we can get excited about who you are and what you're doing father we thank you for your presence in this place touching every life Lord we just need to be recharged with you refilled with your Holy Spirit re-empowered with your purpose in our life so father we draw close to you we thank you for your goodness and your mercy today. In Jesus' name, everyone said, amen. Awesome. All right, Good you ready stuff. for the word of God? Do you have your Bible? The B-I-B-L-E. Let's get it in the air. Make the devil nervous. Man, you are looking good today. Right on. Looking good. Say, this is my Bible. This is my Bible. I can have. I can have. What the Word of God. What the Word of God. Says I can have. Says I can have. I can do. I can do. What the Word of God. What the Word of God. Says I can do. Says I can do. And I am. And I am. What the Word of God. What the Word of God. Says I am. Says I am. Amen. Amen. Father, we just thank you for your Word. Lord, we just ask that our hearts and minds are open to receive. We just come against every distraction, Lord, that would take our mind and our spirit away from receiving spiritual food that blesses us, spirit, soul, and body. So, Father, we thank you for the teacher, the Holy Spirit, to go to work so that everybody here receives from you. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Well, I'm excited about the word today. You know, we're just, uh, Christina's offering was so powerful, you know, if... What, what, what if? was it? What if? What if? What if? And I was thinking about uh, Second Chronicles chapter seven verse fourteen. It says, "If my people," but what if we said it? What if my people humbled themselves and prayed? Well, the answer to that is He would heal our land. And so, uh, just a powerful, powerful offering this morning. But uh, those words, "What if?" And I think we can almost kind of incorporate that into our message this morning because we want to talk about prayer and the praying the word specifically. How many are ready to grow in your prayer life? I hope that's 100% of you because no matter where you are in your prayer life, you can grow more. As, As pastors, I'm excited, and this is not just a one Sunday message. This is something that we are going to keep going on because when it comes to prayer, there is so much to talk about. And I I don't know, I don't think I saw it in the announcements this Sunday, but we are coming up on a prayer meeting on Wednesday, the first Wednesday in April from 7 to 8. Um, We're going to be teaching on prayer and then we're going to be doing example, we're going to move right into prayer. So sometimes if you want to grow and you want to learn and then you want to do, let, let's do it, right? Let's, let's pray. So I'm excited for, for our, that upcoming prayer meeting. But we're kind of doing a little preface it to where we're going. And prayer right now is a key ingredient. And so we're like, let's do this. You know, and I think sometimes we put prayer into this super spiritual religious box. And if we could just break it down to just having conversation with the Lord, 
you know, uh, it might make it a little more palatable and a little less threatening if you're not so much into prayer, you know, just, man, I just want to talk to God, and he wants to talk to me, and so we just want to carve out some time uh, personally to pray, but sometimes we just need some, some tools and some direction and the importance of prayer in our life. You know, I think, and this isn't just, um, this is, goes across the board of Christians and even non-Christians. Many times we find ourselves praying more in crisis. Something comes up. A loved one is, gets really sick or, you know, all of a sudden we have a financial need or, I mean, the list goes on. For a non-Christian, all of a sudden they find themselves in a hopeless situation and all of a sudden they turn to God. I mean, this is, this is not a new thing. This has gone on for centuries. Like, oh, my goodness. I, and then I got to get more people praying, right? This is how it goes, right? Like, the more people I get praying, somehow God's going to listen. Are, are, you, are you hearing me? But did you know how much power you individually have as far as your prayer life? You don't have to have everybody. You don't have to call every friend you know. I'm not saying there's anything wrong with that because the Bible talks about two or three gathered together. He's there in our midst. He talks about all that. But he also talks about, and we're going to learn about, your individual prayer life matters. And You know, I love the heart of God because God's not saying your prayers don't matter. Um, he's so merciful. Your cry to help in crisis matters to him. Uh, he just wants to hear from us. And maybe you're not accustomed to prayer. It's okay because the heart of God is just longing to share himself with you. And uh, he's so gracious and so loving. Um, we just need to learn some stuff a little bit so we can pray more effectively and get into his presence. And sometimes, you know, uh, I know for me, my my life just praying was hard at first and so many distract so many distractions. But there's a time where you just got to press in. Uh, maybe you you're, you're understand athletics and you kind of hit that wall, and it's just like, I don't know if I can keep going anymore. Man, just press through. Yeah. Just keep going. And prayer becomes easier. And uh, when you see answers to prayer, uh, it's a motivation to keep praying because you see what God is doing. And hearing these praise reports Sunday after Sunday yes. is, is a powerful thing that God is for me and not against me. So let's communicate with him. That's right. And specifically where we're headed uh, in the next couple of Sundays is learning how to pray the word of God and how powerful it is when we actually use God's words to, to say, this is what your word says. God's, God will never allow his word to return void. God will always, there are absolutes when it comes to God's word. And you can always bank on his word. So when you begin to pray his word, then you can be like, this is what you said. And God, watch, just then you just stay in faith and watch as God answers. And uh, here's an amazing quote. Faith begins where the will of God is known. Faith begins. We need faith in our prayer life. When you are praying, you want to believe that you are going to receive what you have asked for, right? But, well, I, we don't even, we're not even going there, but in James it says if you don't, then you've asked amiss. So if you don't believe that what you're praying is going to happen, then your, your, your prayers are useless. So if you're having a hard time stirring up your faith, then you got to know the word of God. Are you hearing me? If you're, if you're concerned about your prayers, then know the word of God. So Because faith begins where the will of God is known. So if you know God's will and it's according to the, the word of God, then you can ask with faith, believing, I, I've asked in faith, I know that this is the will of God. Man, it's a done deal. I've been doing some study in the book of Daniel. It's interesting uh, because Daniel was a man of prayer. And it, there's one thing that just kind of stuck out to me. He was reading uh, the book of Jeremiah, the prophet Jeremiah, and he was praying out what he was reading. And I thought, how powerful is that? And that's what, uh, you know, and from that, 
God sent him messengers, Gabriel, to show him some things, and, and it, was, it was powerful things. So we need to learn how to pray God's will for our lives and the lives of our family and friends and things going on in the world today. And uh, I came across this, this quote, the prayer that God accepts is the prayer that God directs. And what, what does that mean? Well, a couple things. We need to allow the Holy Spirit to direct us in our prayer because sometimes we don't know how to pray. But there's also a thing that where we're reading the Scripture, we're using the Scripture as the platform also to pray, pray from. So when God's directing our prayers, sometimes people ask us, man, would you just pray for me for finances? Yeah, I'd love to. What Scriptures are you standing on? Uh, I just want God to bless me. I don't have any Scriptures. Well, that means there's nothing, there's no direction from God for you to launch your prayers from. So the Word of God isn't just a nice book. The Word of God is our tool. It's our manual yeah. to do life yeah. and to learn how to pray and be praying effectively. That is so good. Uh, we're going to go to Jeremiah chapter 1. But while you're going there, I'm just going to give you a practical tip in prayer. Doesn't everybody like practical so sometimes when I am reading the Word of God, I'm, I'm, a, I'm having my alone time with God. I'm reading the Word of God. Something will spur me to go, oh, I need to pray that out right now. Yeah. And I will just stop. It, it's not about am I just reading to check off my box that I'm going through the Bible in a year. There you go. Are you hearing me? I mean, your alone time with God ought to be intimate time with God. It ought to be fun. It ought to be exciting. It ought to be something you enjoy, something you look forward to. I, you know, I'm not a morning person, but do you want to know what actually gets me excited about getting out of bed? And this is, this is the honest truth. My cup of coffee and time with God. I knew coffee was in there somewhere. You knew coffee I knew was it. in there. Just like, is she going to say coffee? <laughs> but I, seriously, I'm not a morning person. But I get excited about my time with God. And so I get my cup of coffee, and I get my Bible, and I get my journals, and I get my, my books or whatever I'm going through, and I start studying the Word of God. And then, But I could be in the middle of reading the Word of God and go, oh, I, I know, God, you want me to pray this out. Or, oh, I need to repent from this because I am being convicted right now. I mean, the list goes on, but when you begin to pray out the scriptures, there is power in that. Okay, Jeremiah. Get excited about this one. Get excited about Jeremiah 112. I mean, you need to just get excited about this because when you use this scripture to launch into your prayer life, I'm just saying get ready for God to do some amazing things. Here we go. We're going to verse 12. Then the Lord said to me, you have seen well, for I am ready to perform my word. I am ready. The heart of God is ready for you. The heart of God is ready to perform his word for you. And notice that my word, the M in my is capitalized. That means it's God. I'm ready to perform my word. Yep. And notice God is a performer. God wants to perform. How many know God wants to perform? Yes, yes. He wants to show you things and, and do things for you. He says, I'm ready to perform my word. It doesn't say he's ready to perform your word. Because sometimes when I pray, I pray amiss. And my word, you know, isn't a good word. <laughs> But he's ready to perform his word, and that's why we want to learn how to pray his word, pray the scriptures out. I'll just say this. Uh, this was a great tool for me in learning to pray um, by uh, Jermaine Copeland, Prayers That Avail Much. And she's kind of got a directory of uh, prayers, pray for your kids, pray for the church, pray for sicknesses, pray for money, whatever. Yeah, job, kind of whatever you're dealing with in life. And uh, so she's compiled all these scriptures, and then she's just turned them into a prayer form. And that, like, 
catapulted me into praying and learning how to pray. There are so many resources out there now. I'm telling you, the body of Christ should be exploding at the amount of resources we have at our fingertips. Literally, if you are dealing with any subject, you can literally at your fingertips get scriptures to to find out about what you're dealing with and pray out some scriptures. It's amazing what is available to us to dive into the word of God if you're willing. That is the question. If you're willing to take the time to dive into the word concerning whatever you're dealing with, there are resources available to help you. Cuz if you are if you're just a a brand new believer, or maybe you're a believer that's walked with God and just never dug deep, <clears throat> there's that, and you're like scared of the Bible, like, okay, I'm starting in Genesis, I don't have a clue what you're talking about, I'm just reading the Bible, and none of it jumps out at me, well then, I, get, get with one of us, and I'll help you with resources, because they are out there, they're available, you, you can even Google it, you can ask Siri, I'm just saying, There's no excuses. I love that Fight Club says no excuses. There's no excuses to a prayer life that is boring. I said it. I said it. There is no excuses to a boring prayer life because everything is available to you right now. And be grateful you live in a country, a free country, where you have the word of God and you have it in multiple translations. You have it at your fingertips. Be grateful. Memorize it. Study it. Get it in you so that it is always available because it's in here. Oh, I'm getting excited. Yes. (laughs) High five that. It's amazing. (laughs) Paula Lonegren, she did uh, the devos this morning before church, and they were so good. And she uh, was talking about communicating to the younger generation who was... uh, uh, responding back to her with emojis. And she's just like, what does that even mean? You know, and just, you know, so she'd write sentences and paragraphs and then get emojis back. And uh, she's just like, I'm not really connecting here. And she likened it. Like she'd ask questions and the answer's just an emoji. And so she likened that to how often do we do that with God in our prayers? We send him up an emoji you know, just quick, hey, God, thumbs up, we're good, you know. Um, <laughs> smiley face, thank you for watching over me, just got about plowed by a car, you know. But, you know, I think God wants, his heart wants to go a little deeper than just emoji prayers. So um, here's a great example of King Solomon's prayer. Uh, and I like this because he comes to God with a humble attitude. That God is awesome. God is great. God is all-powerful. And he kind of comes to me with, who am I? And what a great attitude to approach God. And sometimes, God, I'm all that in a bag of chips, and I need you to do this for me. Is really not the approach Solomon approached God with. But I just want to read this and just, um, just listen to the heart of this. Second Chronicles chapter 1, verse 8 and 12. Solomon replied to God, you showed great and faithful love to David, my father, and now you have made me king in his place. O Lord God, please continue to keep your promise to David, my father, for you have made me king over a people as numerous as the dust of the earth. Give me, uh, give me the wisdom and knowledge to lead them properly. For who could possibly govern this great people of yours? God said to Solomon, because of your great desire to help your people, and you did not ask for wealth, riches, fame, or even the death of your enemies. (laughs) (laughs) That's funny. I'm just saying. (laughs) Or a long life, but rather you asked for wisdom and knowledge to properly govern my people. Look at this. Verse 12. I will certainly give you the wisdom and knowledge you requested, but I will also give you wealth, riches, and fame, such as no other king has had before you or will ever have in the future. Uh, He just came to God with a humbleness of, it's not about me. What I need is knowledge and understanding to help this nation. You know, and I just was arrested by that. You know, what if we came to God, not with selfishness, 
But Lord, what I really need is to draw close to you and the wisdom you operate in. That's what I need to do this life. That's so good. And, you know, I think as you mature in God, it's kind of like a little kid. When a little kid's learning how to pray, usually it starts with a little list that they have compiled of what they want God to do for them. Am I right? And as you grow with God, you start to learn that it's, it's more than just your list. Because prayer is not a monologue. It's a dialogue. It's about learning to commune with somebody else and communicate. You know, if all I ever did was just talk at Greg, we wouldn't really have a good relationship. Communication is learning to listen and listen to the other person. And God wants us to listen to him too, whether it's through his written word. That's why reading the Bible should be a part of your prayer time. Because that is hearing his voice. But also just, you know, if you need some specifics, let's be honest. The Bible's not going to tell you which job to take. You have two options, and you need to know which one God is leading you towards. The Bible's not going to say, go to this job or go to that job. So you need to be able to quiet yourself to hear God and what his will is for you. But here's Solomon it, it, he could have been all selfish all about himself. And he learned he wanted wisdom more than for others. Have you ever thought that God wants to use your prayer life more than just for you? Did you hear what I said? God wants to use your prayer life for more than just you. God wants to be able to get things accomplished here on the earth through you. Yes, watching me, hearing my voice right now through you. He wants to accomplish something. That's why in the midst of of service, we prayed for Ukraine and Russia. Why? Because God wants our prayer life to do something miraculous in the earth today. You are here for such a time as now. You weren't born 100 years ago. You were born for this time frame. Why? Because your prayer life matters now, right now. Jesus said in Mark chapter 6, talking about people and all their needs and what to wear and eat and drink and where do I live and all that stuff. He goes, what you really need to understand is when you seek me first, I will add all these things unto you. So that's kind of what the pattern here, King Solomon was finding is just seeking God and the wealth and riches and fame. God added that in addition to his request. That's right. But praying according to God, praying according to the word is such a powerful thing. Let's go to John chapter 15 and verse 7. Here we go. John 15 and verse 7. But if you remain in me and my words remain in you, You may ask for anything you want, and it will be granted. Did you notice it says if, if, everybody say if, if you remain in him and he remains in you. In other words, you've got to be connected to him. You know, if, if, if you don't talk to God all week, you're not really remaining in him. What happens is people don't talk to him for days until all of a sudden they're like, (gasps) I need God. Yeah, and then there's an uh uh-oh. you got to remain in him and he in you. And then, I love it. It says ask. Are we asking? Are you asking? And then it says if you ask, it will be granted. I think we could put the title Christina used this morning. What if? What if? You remain in him. What if? What if his words remain in you? What if you asked, well, it would be granted unto you. See, there's, a, there's this collation of God's word being in us and a daily dedication to seek God through his word. And when his word is rich inside of us, we can pray, according to the scriptures, out of us. Okay, for the deep thinkers, those are the, if you're a deep thinker, that word remain, or some translations say abide, it is actually the word meno, and here's what it means, to stay, 
to dwell, to lodge. When you're lodging, when you're, when you're living with someone, you're communicating, right? You should be. <laughs> to remain or to continue. That's the kind of prayer life that God wants to have with us. You know, I'm seeing God coming in to lodge in your heart, and he's bringing his suitcases, and he's unpacking and hanging his clothes up in the closet, and like, I'm hanging with you. Isn't that good? Yeah. And so that's, that's the idea he wants for us. Come on, man, let's, let's dwell together. Let's, let's live life together. Let's, let's not you do it apart from me. Let's do it together. Okay, so once we start learning this remain or abide thing to, to live together, then Ephesians, Ephesians 6.18 makes sense. So Ephesians 6.18 says, pray in the Spirit at all times. Now, I know lots of you have read that scripture and go, that is impossible. I, my brain cannot be praying at all times. When you live together, you, and let, let's be real, even now our brains can a little bit comprehend we are in communication with people more than ever because we have what? Phones on us at all times, usually texting, whatever. When you are dwelling together with your Abba, Heavenly Father, and the Holy Spirit is your helper, you can talk to him at any given time. Now, I'm not saying that you don't have quality conversations just like you should have with family members, right? Not just quick conversations. But even with family members, you have quality conversations, and then what? You have to go about your day. And what do you have th during the day? Maybe a, just a quick conversation. It might be just a quick statement. And it is the same way with God, your heavenly Father. Let me even give you another example. I'm going to give you a live example of what took place in my last 48 hours. Okay, you ready? So, the last 48 hours, hang on your seats. Come on, kids, listen up. The last 48 hours, I had to personally and my husband say goodbye to our youngest who, because of a job, they are moving to Arizona. They're going from Oregon to Arizona. We loved our newlywed little youngest living in Oregon because it was drivable. So the last 48 hours, they said, Mom, Dad, let's, let's meet. Let's have some fun for, well, it was more like it wasn't even 48 hours, but 24 hours. 24 hours, we're just going to have fun together. Well, I know that my youngest is very much an adventurous girl, just like her daddy. And she married somebody who also loves adventures. So we're sitting around the breakfast table, and the statement comes up, what are we going to do today? And I know an adventure is waiting. So they came up with some ideas. It usually always involves hiking, which I, I love to hike. But granted, I'm not on the same level as my daughter, who is 30 years younger than me, and her husband. Now, he, on the other hand, can pretty much keep up with anybody. So, I'm like, I'm in. Because honestly, I, I, I'm going to be with them, right? I'm not missing this. So, we go on this adventure. I also know that when my husband says it's an easy hike, what this really looks like... Is, I can't even count how many times this has happened. The road to even get to the trailhead is blocked off, which means you're going to have to hike, and this happened, through snow, and I didn't even have snow boots, through snow to get to the trailhead. Yeah. I was huffing and puffing before he ever even got to the trailhead. And I said, honey, I love you, but what have you gotten me into this time? And, of course, my daughter and her husband are long ahead of us. I thank God because they couldn't hear me huffing and puffing. I really hope they're not watching right now. I luckily had brought hiking boots because I am fully aware of what my family likes to do. So I had hiking boots, but I'm talking snow. So, and then my husband, barricades don't matter. Chains don't matter. You crawl under, you crawl over, you do whatever you got to do to do an adventure. And I am literally going, oh, we need to go back. We need to go back. And, and the three of them are all going, we don't need to go back. I can get through that. 
Seriously? See, barricades and chains and all that mean there's nobody there. We can enjoy it. That is exactly what they said. That's exact. My son-in-law goes, we got the place to ourselves. This is great. It's a gift from God. Okay, I'm getting back to prayer. Remember I told you I have good conversations with God and then I need quick conversations with God? I was having a lot of quick conversations with God yesterday. And by the time, we had a great time. We did. The, where, the, the place we went to was amazing. I'm not going to even tell you where. Can't even say where. Because I told you there were barricades. <laughs> had a great time. But on the way back, this body of mine was going, you bargained way more than you you are not in that good of shape. You may think you're in shape, but you're not in that good of shape. And I was praying. Okay, it might have been an extended prayer. It might have even been a longer prayer. I am praying in tongues. I'm praying under my breath. I'm going, God, if you get me to that truck, who moved the truck? <laughs> so when we got to our message, I went, oh, Greg, I got the example for you because I prayed all yesterday under my breath. It was an adventure and a half. those who have. wait upon the Lord, re oh, he renews, their, he renews strength. their strength. They can walk and not faint. And you did not faint. <laughs> there it is. Praying out the scriptures as we go. Uh. But praying at all times can be, and this kind of segues into uh, another prayer that we won't get into today, but praying in the spirit. Because uh, the Bible tells us Paul said, I pray, I pray in the Spirit more than you all. And really what he was saying is, I can go about my day praying in the Spirit, and I don't have to stop and, and think about praying in English. I can pray perfect prayers, unhindered prayers, from, the, from and through the Holy Spirit to the Father as I go about his, his day, which is a powerful gift that we have from God. But the thing that we got to get to is, are we seizing the time to pray. Because there will be a time where we won't be able to pray. Now is the time to pray. Take the time to pray. Talk to God. We're living in crazy times. And it's time to really, really get to know the Lord. Yes. Because if you don't recognize his voice when he tells you to go or move or duck or run or stop at this stoplight, yes. if we're not accustomed to his voice in prayer, we can miss some stuff that could cost us dearly. So seize the time to pray. Let's seize it. It's Ephesians, we're going to, uh, we're still in chapter 6. I want you, yeah, I want to reread it, though. And this time I'm going to reread it in the King James. So I read to you in the NLT. Now I'm reading in the New King James. It says, praying always with all prayer and supplication. I'm going to talk about that word supplication. In the spirit being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for the saints. Now, supplication here, you are a mediator on someone else's behalf. You are, you are praying on behalf of someone else. A live example is earlier in the service when we were supplicating for the saints in Ukraine. That is what that is talking about right there. You are being a mediator. And then I love when it says with all prayers. Now, we're probably, um, when we do our Wednesday night prayer meeting, that first Wednesday night in April, we're going to get into that phrase there, with all kinds of prayer. Because there are different kinds of prayer. That's what's so exciting. God is exciting. If you ever think God or prayer is boring, then you haven't walked with God long enough. Because it is exciting. It's awesome. You know what else is exciting? Is when you see your prayers answered. Amen. I made it to the truck. I made it through the snow. I made it through rocky terrain. <laughs> I, I made it. But I was praying the whole time. Praying without ceasing. Um, you know, and I want to, I, don't, I, I know our time's going, but I don't want to, us to not give them some benefits of praying the word. Well, let's just do a quick illustration. And then we'll go into the bennies. Pastor Michael, I need you. 
Today, today in this moment, in this illustration, you are not Pastor Michael. You are Abba Father God. Oh. There you are. I think he likes that one. If you ever want to know what God looks like. <laughs> All right. So I need you to go over there by Mr. Beardsley. Yeah, right? <laughs> Real close. Real close. So uh, in, in prayer, a lot of times, sometimes this may be where we begin in our relationship with the Lord, and, and he's over there. And uh, so I'm like, he can't hear me. He can't hear me because we got distance. We got distance. So it's not about God moving towards me. I got to move towards him. So I got to walk over. And, and, you know, sometimes, you know, we can, we can talk. What? See, I can hear him saying something, but I can't quite. I think I heard what he said, but... It, he said something about Chipotle because I was asking him about what to eat, but I'm not sure. And he didn't ask. He didn't ask answer the other one that I was asking. You know, what are you going to eat? You know, so I'm only getting I'm only getting pieces because, and sometimes prayer is like that, you know. And then we get frustrated because, man, God, I, I'm I'm only getting bits and pieces. Moses said something, and I just I loved this. Uh, what he, Moses asked God, God, I want to communicate with you, not in in rhymes and riddles where I got to articulate and figure out and, you know, this means that and that. And uh, and now I got to move these pieces around. And I I think this is a picture. Moses said, God, can you just talk to me like a friend face to face? I mean, that's what prayer really is. Okay, so I'm going to help all the children in this place or those of you who think that what he means is you, you climb up a mountain to get closer to God. That is not what he means. Right. Closer to God does not mean physically trying to get closer to God. Closer to God means the more you talk to God, the closer you understand him or get to him. Just like the more you talk with your mom or your dad, you're getting closer to them, you understand them. Just like a friend at school, the more you talk to one person, the closer you are to them. That's what he, the kind of closeness he's talking about with God, not, not a physical location. Everybody got me? Okay. So as I draw close to Cowboy God, hey, man, where are you going to, what are you going to eat after church? Some El Toro. Some El Toro? Yeah, that sounds good. Hey, do you got some money I could borrow? You know, so. uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't tithed it to you yet? Okay. <laughs> but when you get close, even, you know, to an individual, you can understand. And how many know, even, even this relationship is challenging in communication, right? Yes. We're working on it for a few years, and we're getting better at it, but that's how we got to draw close to God because the Bible says his, his ways aren't your ways, and his thoughts aren't your thoughts. So we need to, that ought to motivate us to get closer to him so we know more specifically what he's talking about. So, next Sunday, we're going to start talking about the benefits of prayer. We're going to start walking you through how to actually pray some scriptures, and they can become part of your prayer life. And they will, I mean, they will open up your prayer closet, your prayer room, wherever you pray. When you start praying these prayers that oh, are just in give the Bible. Them, give them Philippians. I mean, it just. Okay, one scripture. Give them this one. Philippians 4, 6 says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. So there you can see already a benefit is anxiety leaves. How many think our society is looking for something to help their anxiety level? Don't, don't you hear that a lot? I've got so much anxiety. Do you know that your prayer life can remove and begin to lift the anxiety that seems to press you down? Because when you're in the presence of God, anxiety doesn't dwell there. 
Okay, that was just a little bit of an hors d'oeuvre for next week. <laughs> Would you stand to your feet? Can I just, when I'm with the Lord, I'm a happier person. And if you want to be happy and you don't, and you want to get rid of anxiety, just draw near the Lord. So good. Father, we just come before you. We just thank you for you wanting to talk to us. You're the creator of the universe. When we look into the, the, the sky at night and see all the stars, and we understand that you know every one of them by name, but yet you know me. You know me. You know us. You know the, the hairs on our head, and that number is changing all the time. You know it. But, Father, we want to know you. We want to know you. So we want to draw near you. If you're here this morning or watching online and you don't have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, he seems far. Today's a day to draw near to him by receiving him as your Lord and Savior. He wants to forgive you. He wants to cleanse you. He wants to renew you. He wants to give you life and life more abundantly. He wants to show you things that you don't know yet. So, we need to acquaint ourselves with him. We need to give our life to him. So, on the count of three, if you're in this place and you haven't received Jesus or you've, you need to rededicate your life, do it. It's a decision you will never, ever regret. So, on the count of three, raise your hand. If you're watching online, respond. Raise your hand, doing whatever you're doing. One, God is good. He wants to do life with you. Two, get the arguments out of your mind that you're fine without him. You might be okay today, but what about tomorrow? What about for eternity? If you don't have him going into eternity, you're, you're in a hopeless place. Three, raise your hand. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Can you all repeat this prayer after me? For those who've raised their hand, pray it with them. For those who are watching me online, listening to, by the sound of my voice, you need Jesus. You need to get right with God. Then let's pray this prayer together. Say, Dear Heavenly Father. Dear Heavenly Father. I thank you. I thank you. For the blood of Jesus. For the blood of Jesus. That forgives me. That forgives me. From all. From all. My sin. My sin. Where I've fallen short. Where I've fallen short. Of your best. Of your best. And I thank you. And I thank you. Today. Today. I'm a new creation. I am a new creation. In Christ. In Christ. The old. The old. Is passed away. Is passed away. And all. All has become new. Has become new. I thank you. I thank you for teaching me. For teaching me how to pray. How to pray. How to communicate. How to communicate with you. With you on a daily basis. On a daily basis. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Believers in the house, those who are walking with God, God wants to challenge you in these weeks to come to stretch yourself in your prayer life. To begin to grow and learn about God and about how you can communicate with Him. Are you ready? Are you ready, church? Amen. I am too. Amen. You know, a pretty cool thing, the Bible, it's the Word of God. It's also the will of God. So if you're praying what the Bible says... You're praying the will of God. So if you don't know what to pray for, look in the book. Not bad advice, right? Mm -hmm. But when you pray what the Bible says, it's not a thought that Matt came up with. It's a thought that God came up with. And I'm coming in agreement with our Heavenly Father, with Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, that the th that which God already said, and that I am confessing in my life, that's going to take place. And that's going to give you confidence. Because it's not what I'm thinking about. It's what God already said. And I'm just reminding myself of something that God already said. So I can stand confidently. I can stand boldly. And I can believe the things that I'm praying for are backed by heaven. 
Amen? Amen. A few minutes to say hello to everybody, but then we're going to need help one more time putting up tables for the ladies for Faith Club. I think John Pranzi's in charge of that one today. If, you need, if we can kind of coordinate that in a few minutes. But Father God, we just thank you for today. We thank you for a great crowd. We thank you, Father God, that we can pray your word and you hear us. And you're, you perform your word, Father God, and you are faithful. And so we thank you for yes and amen and towards your word, Father God. And we thank you that it's your will. And you, you said, it is my will. Be thy made whole, be blessed, be strengthened. It's yes and amen for God. So, Father, we just thank you for your word. We, we, we just sow it into our hearts, and we just kind of stay in the word to keep staying in that attitude of prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a great week. We will see you later. Be blessed. God is with us. Oh.